I know one of the issues that we're going to have to discuss is the filing fee, as this fee was waived um, at the time of filing. And I don't know if the parties are going to be in agreement with just dividing the filing fee or if Mr. LaPointe wants to pay for it. Uh, how much? It's, I think it's $255. Yes. Thank you for that. We usually don't have to pay, my clients usually don't have to pay for it, so I'm just going off of memory. Right. So it could be something that you guys agree to divide, but because of the fee waiver, Mary isn't going to be obligated to pay it. I thought that she had just started back at uh, full, gone from part time to full time and come off the workers comp. So I think they're are they they're pretty comparable on incomes. I thought. Um, I mean, it was like two weeks ago when we ran support stuff. So we can split it. And so, Judge Brown, like I apologize for we were just talking about the filing fee and how we were going to go about and address that because I realized we didn't discuss that in mediation earlier. Thank you, Mr. Keeney. I appreciate you doing that. Do you want a few more minutes or? Um, Mary, would you be okay with just splitting the cost? Yeah, I'm fine. That's done, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, and of course, the, the clerk will not take partial payments. So the judge needs to provide that one person will pay it, and the other person will reimburse the other party half. Um, oh. And the, the court, uh, uh, we're going to have a date. The court will give us the, uh, the person that's paying as much time as they need. And even if they need an extension, the court will always grant parties an extension of time to pay the filing fee. So I appreciate you at least raising that to Mr. Keeney. But then we'll call the case. Court is now in session. Mary Ellen LaPointe versus James LaPointe. For the record, this matter is before the court for a pretrial conference. The same as being conducted via Zoom. Uh, present this morning is uh, attorney Michael Keeney representing the plaintiff, Mary Ellen LaPointe. Mr. LaPointe appears to be present in addition Attorney Catherine Kajewski is present, representing the defendant, James LaPointe. Mr. LaPointe appears to be present. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning. The parties have conferred at length with uh, Ms. Walker for the front of the court this morning. Uh, and apparently the parties have reached their own agreement with the assistance of uh, Mr. Walker and their attorneys. Is that, is that correct? It is, Your Honor. Wonderful. Who would like to place that agreement on the record? I will, Your Honor, and I'll begin with uh, proof that is okay. Please, Mr. Keeney. So I'd like to go ahead and call Mary Ellen as a witness. Thank you. And did you instruct our office to file a complaint for divorce on or about November 2nd, 2023? Yes. Had you lived in Monroe County for at least 10 days at the time of the filing? Yes. Had you lived in Michigan for at least six months at the time of the filing? Yes. Were all of the allegations in the complaint for divorce true at the time of filing? Yes. Are those allegations still true today? Were any minor children born during your marriage? Yes. Can you please state their names and ages? 17, 9. Thank you. And to the best of your knowledge, are you currently pregnant? No. Um, we have mentioned that there is an agreement regarding this divorce. Is there any property that needs to be divided? No. So the marital home located at yes. Brent's. Is it your understanding that that home is going to be awarded to you free and clear of any claim uh, by Mr. LaPointe? Yes. Is it your understanding that both of you are to keep your retirement accounts um, as your sole property free and clear of the claim of the other party? Yes. Is it your understanding that any vehicles that you currently have are going to be awarded to you uh, as your sole property with uh, free and clear from any claim from the other party? Yes. And is it also your understanding that neither of you is going to be awarded spousal support and the issue of spousal support is going to be permanently barred? Yes. And regarding your minor children, are you agreeing to joint legal and joint physical custody? Yes. Are you also agreeing to reserve the issue of child support as each one of you will have the children on an equal basis? Yes. And would you agree that there has been a breakdown of the marriage to the extent that the objects of matrimony have been destroyed and there is no reasonable likelihood of reconciliation? Yes. 
are you asking that your last name be restored as part of this divorce? Or would you like to keep the last name LaPointe? I would like to keep the name. Thank you. And did you disclose all of your assets as part of this process? Yes. Thank you. No further questions, Your Honor. I have a few questions. Have a few questions and additions for uh for Miss LaPointe, uh, if you don't mind. Please. So uh Miss LaPointe, is it um is it also your intent to um uh pay off Mr. LaPointe's vehicle, um, which uh would require a 30k loan that you'd be um, ideally going and taking in order to uh, pay those funds uh, towards his vehicle. Yes. Okay. And if we can't get the loan, are you open to some sort of contingency plan? We'd get that money from the quadro, or we do a payment plan, or you'd assume the loan somehow. His vehicle. Do you agree that somehow his vehicle will be paid off by you? Yes. Okay. Um, and you understand that, that part of the reserving child support is we're also deviating uh, because there's property awarded in lieu of. Um, we wanted you to have the home uh, so that the children could remain in the home with you for stability. Um, so that is part of why we're doing no child support today. Um, you understand that, correct? Yes. And are you agreeing to opt out of friend of the court services? Yes. Okay. Um, uh, and there is a process to reinstate if, if you decide to to reinstate that in the future. Um, and I know you address the retirement accounts, um, you, but you agree that each keeps not only their own retirement accounts, but also bank accounts, um, ESOP plans, uh, and debts. Yes. Okay. Um, all right. Thank you. I, I have no further questions for uh, for this witness. All right. Thank you. Um, Ms. Kajusi, questions for Mr. LaPointe, please. Sure. Uh, Mr. LaPointe, did you hear the settlement that was read onto the record? Yes, I do. Um, and do you fear that, feel that it's fair and equitable? Yes, I do. Do you understand that you had a right to go to trial? To, well, not today, but you had a right to take this case to trial. And at trial, Judge Bromlett could have ruled more favorably, less favorably, or substantially the same as how we settled today. Yes, I understand. And you're agreeing to waive your right to trial and asking the judge to enter this consent agreement instead of trial, correct? Yes. And do you believe the custody, parenting, time, and support proposed are in the best interest of your minor children? Yes. Okay. Thank you. I have no no further questions for my client either. All right. Thank you. Mr. Keeney, do you have any questions for Mr. LaPointe? I do not, Your Honor. Thank you. Okay. Um, so uh, if I understand correctly, the judge will provide, and you'll provide the judgment, correct, Mr. Keeney? That's correct, Your Honor. The judge will provide that Mr. LaPointe will pay the $255 filing fee and that uh, Mr. LaPointe will reimburse him one half. Do you need to set a time frame by which I'll be paid? Do both of you believe 30 days is enough time, or would you like to ask the judge for longer than 30 days to pay the $255 filing fee? 30 days is fine with me. 30 days? Yep. Okay. Mitchell, a point if you need additional time, just contact the court. Okay. So just, just don't blow it off. We don't want to uh, have to issue orders to show cause. One last issue the, the statutory six month waiting period expires on May 2nd. And uh, Mr. Mr. The point because of there, there's a minor minor children. There's a statutory six month waiting period, which uh, six months begins to run the date the divorce complaint was filed, which was November second. So six months expires May second. This court has the authority to waive the rebalance the waiting period. The court would do so if you both agree and enter the judgment of divorce uh, as soon as it's prepared but later this month. Um, if you believe it to be investments for children to finalize things sooner than later and moving forward. So, Ms. LaPointe, are you asking the court to waive the statutory six-month waiting period? Yes. All right. Um, same question for you, Mr. LaPointe. Do you also agree that the court should waive the balance of waiting period and enter the judgment sooner than later? Mr. LaPointe? Yes. All right. Thank you. All right. So anything further, Mr. Keeney or Ms. Kajewski? No, Your Honor. Not for me. Are we a 14-day, 21-day return of judgment period? So we make sure we get that back to you in time? There's it's this court does not oppose a time frame. Uh, okay. I, I think some some courts in Wake County perhaps do. There, oh. this court does not. Uh, anyway, the court would like to thank and acknowledge uh, Mr. Walker for his assistance, as well as of course attorneys Keeney and Kajuski for helping facilitate amicable resolution. The court would applaud the two of you, Mr. Point. You can co-parent your children, which is wonderful. They will do well in life. They will thrive because you're on the same page. And there may be bumps in the road in the future, some challenges, but they can all be dealt through effective communication. So please keep that in mind. There's enough challenges in life. Make it good for each other and the children. Um, but it's yeah. wonderful if you can co-parent them. 
Now, based on the testimony, however, that's been presented this morning, as well as claim filed in this case, the court finds that jurisdiction has been established. The court further finds that there has been a breakdown of the marriage relationship to the extent that the objects of matrimony have been destroyed and there appears to be no reasonable likelihood that the marriage can be preserved. The court, upon receipt of the consent judgment, the court will sign that judgment. And at that time, the court will order that the marriage between the parties be dissolved and judgment shall enter, granting a divorce from the bonds of matrimony. Good luck to both of you. Uh, thank you again, uh, Mr. Keeney and Ms. Kajewski. That will conclude this hearing. You can zoom out. Have a good rest of the day. Thank you, Thank you, Judge. Thank you. Welcome. Rochelle, can you hear us? Can you unmute yourself? Got it. Thank you. Court is now in session. Rochelle Trudeau versus Trevor McBee. For the record, this marriage before the court. Something the parties have engaged in mediation with uh, Mr. Pratt this morning for the front of the court. This hearing is being conducted via Zoom. President Attorney Maria Zagorski representing uh, the plaintiff, Rochelle Trudeau. Ms. Trudeau appears to be present. In addition, defendant father Trevor McBee appears to be present. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, the court has been informed the parties made some progress uh, toward an agreement this morning. Is that correct, Ms. Zagorski? It is. All right. Um, can you say what you understand to be the agreement on the record, please? Yes. Thank you, Your Honor. The parties have one minor child, Hadley, who's 10 years old. And um, Ms. Laprade was really helpful today in, in facilitating a conversation about how to serve that child. What the parties have agreed is as follows. Um, Mr. McBee is going to spend more one-on-one -on -one time with the minor child. There were conversations about maybe picking her up for dinner or just grabbing her to to get together just for a visit, in addition to his regular parenting time. They agreed that he's going to contact Viva, which is her dance company, as well as her school to request information and be added to distribution lists. The parties have agreed that they're going to communicate with each other more regularly, and they're going to let Hadley know that they're communicating with each other more regularly. And toward that end, they're going to respond to each other's texts within 24 hours. They are going to both tell Hadley that they've discussed everything and that they've decided that um, that the modification to parenting time is best. The, the point is that Hadley is going to know that the parties are in communication and that the parties are in control. And so what they've agreed is that um, the prior parenting time will schedule will continue except for that instead of being week on week off all summer long um, dad will exercise week on week off parenting time in the month of june and then for july and august when hadley goes back to dance dad's parenting time will be every other weekend from thursday after dance until tuesday to dance um, which is a reduction in his time but it facilitates mom being able to get hadley to and from her dance on tuesdays wednesdays and thursdays We've also reviewed child support, and um, based on the party's incomes, Ms. LaPrade ran the formula, and child support should be $714 a month. However, the parties have agreed to deviate from that amount downward, and um, so child support will be $500 a month effective January 1st of this year. Mom is going to let the child know that dad is in fact contributing to her extracurricular activities and that reduced amount does include contribution to the extracurricular activities. Um, the uninsured medical is 2080, 20% being plaintiff, 80% being defendant. Um, that'll be 490 base, $10 ordinary medical, you know, for the placeholders, the normal 454 uninsured medical first uninsured medical expenses to my client. Um, and that is the party's agreement. I'll be drafting an order that incorporates all of this and submitting it to your honor for entry. Wonderful. Thank you, Ms. Sikorsky. That's wonderful to hear. Um, Mr. McBee, did Ms. Sikorsky accurately state your agreement? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Sikorsky, if you could just uh, briefly word there, Ms. Uh, Trudeau. Yes. Uh, are they took us of agreement and confirm with her that she, her belief that uh, this agreement is in the best interest of uh, the minor child Hadley, please? Absolutely. Rochelle, would you please state your name for the record? Rochelle Trudeau. And we participated in mediation this morning, correct? Yes. And you heard the agreement that I just placed on the record with the judge? Yes. Do you understand it? Yes. Do you believe it to be in Hadley's best interest? I do. We've constructed a situation where you and dad will be communicating more regularly and you're encouraging dad to participate more in Hadley's life. Is that true? Yes. 
And to effectuate this agreement, and because you believe it to be in Hadley's best interest, you're willing to take less child support? Yes. You understand what the formula allows you to have, and you and I have discussed that. And again, you agree that taking less money, but having dad participate more is in the child's best interest. Yes. Do you have any questions of me? No. Are you asking the court to adopt this agreement? I am. Thank you. That's all I have for my client, Judge. Thank you, Ms. Gorski. Mr. McBee, could you please state your name and your current uh, mailing address for the record, please? Uh, Trevor McBee. Thank you. Mr. McBee, the agreement that's been stated in the record that uh, you've reached this morning, do you believe that to be in the best interest of your daughter, Hadley? Yes, Your Honor. Do you have any questions for the court or any questions for Ms. Gorski? I do not, Your Honor. Thank you. Ms. Gorski, do you have any questions of Mr. McBee? No, thank you, Your Honor. Um, Again, the court would like to thank and acknowledge Mr. Pratt as well as Mr. Gorski for helping facilitate resolution. But the court would applaud the two of you as parents. It's wonderful. Uh, Hadley will definitely benefit um, that she knows you're both on the same page. And we need a, an active dad just as much as we need an active mom in her life. So the court uh, definitely finds this agreement between the best interest of minor child. Hadley, the court will accordingly uh, uh, enter the order uh, upon presentment. Good job. Uh, thank you again to Ms. Gorsi. That will conclude this hearing. You can all both zoom out. Have a good rest of the day. Thank you, Your Honor. You're welcome. Raquel, great. Mark this matter is before the court for a pretrial conference. The same is being conducted via Zoom. The court is in receipt of what appears to be a proposed consent judgment divorce, and both parties that appear to be present. You are Rodney Braden. You need to unmute yourself, sir. Oh, he does have a. Can't hear you, sir. She you, needs her own. Un, you need to unmute yourself. No, she's good, good now. Yeah. Just, I'm sorry. No, you're good. We can hear you. you can you tell him to unmute himself? Unmute. So he can't hear us, then, right? He can hear us. Mr. Braden, you need to unmute yourself. We cannot hear you. He okay. The record this marriage before the court for a pretrial conference, the same as being conducted via Zoom. It appears that both parties are present. Is Rodney Braden present on audio? Yes, sir. Okay, and uh, Lee uh, Braden is also present. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Braden, are you still receiving public assistance? Yes, sir. Okay, Ms. Braden, are you on public assistance? No, sir. All right, there's a, a, a filing fee that needs to be paid um, to $175 to the Monroe County Clerk. Since you're not on public assistance, Ms. Braden, the court will order you to pay that. The right thing for you, Mr. Braden, to do is to reimburse you for half of that, but I cannot order him to do so since, since he's on public assistance. And I'll give you as much time as you need to pay that, Ms. Braden. You pay that to the Monroe County Clerk. Um, can you pay the 175 to the County Clerk on before March 29th, the last Friday of this month? Yes, sir. All right. Yes, Your Honor. So you can pay by credit card, but you can charge a fee. The best way to do is just to get the other cash and come into the County Clerk's office. Um, uh, yes, so. What date, did you, what date March, did you say? March 29th. That's Good Friday. Courthouse okay. is closed only till is only open till noon that day. And if you need more time, you call the court and I will give you another month. Just do not ignore it or blow it off. Okay. okay. If yes. you need till the end of April, you call here. I'll give you till the end of April. But don't ignore it. If you, if you ignore it, blow it off, that's when bench warrants issue, and we don't want to do that. So I'm going to write in this judgment that the defendant, Lee Raquel Braden, shall pay the $175 filing fee to the Merrill County Clerk on before January. I'm sorry, I'm for March 29th, 2024, and I'll initial that, okay? Yes. Um, all right, we'll start with you, Mr. Braden. Can you please state your name and current address, Mr. Braden? Uh, Rodney Allen Braden. Thank you. Is it true, Mr. Braden, you filed the complaint for divorce with this court on about December 1st, 2023? Yes, sir. Is it further true that on the date you filed the complaint, you've been resident of the county Monroe at least 10 days and the state of Michigan at least six months? Uh, can you repeat that, sir? Is it true that on the date you filed that complaint, namely December 1st, that you had resided yes. in the county of Monroe at least 10 days in the state of Michigan at least six months? Yes, sir. Is it further true that you married to Lee uh, Lormore, now known as Braden, on August 1st, 2022, and you separated in November of 2023? Yes, sir. Is it true there's been a breakdown of your marriage relationship to the extent that the obviously match when you've been destroyed and there's no reasonable chance of reconciliation? Yes, sir. Were there any children born or adopted during your marriage? No. No, sir. Is it true that you signed your name to this proposed judgment approving the terms and conditions contained therein? 
Yes, sir. Ms. Braden, did you hear the testimony of your husband, Rodney, this afternoon? I did. Was this testimony true and accurate, to the best of your knowledge? Yes. Are you currently pregnant? No. And did you also sign your name to this proposed judgment, proving the terms and conditions contained therein? I did, yes. Okay. All right, I'm going to walk through the terms of this with you. You both agree that spousal support alimony is not awarded. That's forever barred. You've already divided your personal property, so each will keep the personal property currently in your possession, free and clear of any claim in part of the other. Um, now, it does reference uh, a debt addendum. You've got pretty significant debt for a short-term marriage. Uh, there's a, a two-page addendum. Uh, looks like all credit cards, about nine credit card accounts. We spelled them all out, the interest rate and the outstanding balance. And it appears that the sum total, there's almost $70,000 in credit card debt. And Rodney will pay approximately four, will pay $49,605.76. And uh, Lee will pay $20,101.44 of that total $69,707. Is that correct? Yes, sir. No, sir. Okay. Oh. No. Didn't you sign this? Did you agree to all this, Mrs. Braden? No, I, I just got this paper handed to me last week, um, Saturday, I believe it was. I am claiming um, responsibility for the American Express card, which was to okay, pay hold off. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's, let's stop right there. I mean, okay. is, wasn't this, when you approve this judgment, wasn't this a two page uh, document attached? No. It was no, not. Mr. 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 Braden, you're, you're misleading. Miss Braden, you're misleading this court. You suggest you're, you're you're part of the judgment no. agreed to that. No. Your Honor, uh, she was told that that paper was when I she that that paper was available, and she for a week she didn't uh, bother right. coming to get it. And she she well, came a week later and got it. And I've also tried she, to get her. She's not agreeable today, days. Mr. Braden. She's not agreeable today. Pardon so me? the court's not signed this judgment. Hold on, I'm going to. Um, I'm going to order the two of you engage in mediation with the front of the court. Do you want to talk about it this afternoon uh, with the front of the court? You need a couple of hours to do so. You need to perhaps go through all these bills. Yeah. All right. Uh, is Mr. Walker available? He's, with the, um, he's available. He's just waiting to bring this. Okay. Uh, we're going to have a talk with Mr. Walker for the front of the court. He's a certified mate mediator, um, and he's going to help you walk through these, uh, these obligations. Uh, actually, I'm going to see if I can uh, fax or email down to him a copy of this attachment, and the two of you can maybe agree upon how you're going to divide this debt. He needs to bring in the two people right now. Okay, so we're going to put you in a breakout room right now, and then we'll put you in, in uh, with Mr. Walker. After you're done talking with him, he come back, and either the court can schedule a trial date, um, or we can schedule a longer mediation, okay? Okay. He's going to uh, scan an email. Oh. Oh, he's um, bringing the other uh, he's bringing bringing the parties, Riley, okay. But I, I told him that uh, Cindy was okay. going to send it. That's the only issue is the uh, $70,000 in credit card debt. Mm -hmm. and for one year. Nine months. Nine months. Well, uh, we sent out Mr. and Mrs. Braden. They have a consent judgment, but Mr. Braden attached to it after she approved the judgment, two-page list of $70,000 worth of credit card debt. And she said, I never agreed to any of that. So uh, we're scanning down to you the, the two handwritten pages of credit card debt. Uh, so they have uh, something in front of you when you talk with them. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Court is now a session. Carson Wiley versus Jared Schultz. For the record, this marriage before the court for a pretrial conference, the same as being conducted via Zoom. It appears that both parties are present. Um, Carson Wiley and uh, Jared uh, Carson Wiley and Jared Schultz. Uh, Mr. Walker, have the parties been able to reach your own agreement with your assistance this afternoon? They have, Your Honor, and I am prepared to put it on the record if you would like. Okay. Mr. Wiley, we mailed you a form judgment of divorce. Two pages. Do you have that with you? Miss Wiley. Uh, uh, Wiley, I'm sorry. Yes, I do. I, I see the shadow of your, your head and I, I couldn't quite tell. And so do you put that in front of you, that judgment, so you can properly fill in the blanks. Make sure that you're following uh, the, uh, the agreement. It's two-page, pretty self-explanatory. Fill in the blanks. 
All right. Uh, so both of you listen carefully what Mr. Walker states what he understands to be your agreement, please. Yes, Your Honor. The parties. Mr. Walker. Yes, Your Honor. The parties have a mobile home located at the parties agree that Miss Wiley is going to uh, be allowed to keep that vehicle or that uh, mobile home free and clear. Uh, the title is in her name only as of now, and any loans against it are in her name only. So there's there, she doesn't have to. There doesn't have to be any title transfer. And uh, nothing has to be refinanced. <laughs> as far as any other personal property, the parties agree that they are going to keep what is currently in their own possession. Uh, for debt, there is no joint debt. The parties have agreed they're going to keep their own debt. Same with bank accounts. There are no joint bank accounts. The parties are going to keep their own bank accounts and any money that's in those accounts. Uh, each party is going to re retain their own retirement accounts. So any 401ks, IRAs, or pensions, or any other type of retirement account, they're going to keep their own free and clear. Uh, as far as vehicles are concerned, Miss Wiley has a 2016 Toyota Avalon that she is going to keep free and clear. It is titled in her name alone, and the loan is in her name alone. Uh, there's a 2001 Lexus GS430 that Jared is going to be able to keep and maintain and will be liable for it. Uh, neither party has a life insurance policy. Neither party is requesting spouse support and it is forever barred. Uh, as far as the minor child is concerned, the parties are going to share joint legal custody of the minor child. Sole physical custody is going to be awarded to Mrs. Wiley. For parenting time, the father is going to have time uh, by FaceTime, a minimum of two times per week. Those times and dates will be agreed as agreed by the parties. Any in-person parenting time is going to be reasonable and liberal and agreed by the parties. Uh, child support, base child support is going to be zero and ordinary medical will be $5 per month. If there are any uninsured medical expenses, the parties are going to split that 50% each. And for claiming the minor child for tax purposes, the parties have agreed that they are going to follow any IRS regulation regarding, uh, regarding claiming minor child. And Your Honor, what are the IRS regulations? Uh, IRS regulations state that whoever has the minimum is for the IRS regulations, whoever has the minor child more days during the year gets to claim the minor child. Okay, more overnights? I, I believe the regulation actually specifies days and not overnights. Okay. And presumably, Miss Wally will be the parent with the most overnights, and most days of parenting time, correct? At this point in time, that is correct, Your Honor. All right. Miss um, Wally, is that a correct statement of your agreement? Yes. All right. To Mr. Schultz, is that a correct statement of your agreement? Yes. Okay. So there's no real estate. So you can you check the boxes. For example, the uh, personal property, you can indicate that each is awarded the personal property currently in their possession, free and clear, claiming part of the other. So that would cover, I think, the automobile and uh, uh, it would cover the mobile home because the mobile home is in your possession right now, Ms. Wiley, correct? Mr. Schultz is yep. vacated. Yes. It's held in your name, that's your name. So I think that would cover that. And then, then each will keep their own automobile. There's another paragraph for automobiles. Each keep their own automobile and pay any debt they're on. Um, each would retain their own retirement benefits. And then, of course, at the top, you deal with the joint legal physical to uh, plaintiff mother, reasonable and liberal parenting time for dad, including uh, the FaceTime parenting time. So I think you can pretty much fill in those blanks. And of course, you need to then the Bob Pay Tree, you need to sign your name and date the judgment. Then you need to get that to Mr. Schultz for his review and approval. So meet this weekend or something at Tim Horns or wherever and uh, communicate and make sure you're both reviewed and signed together. Then you need to return to the court. You'll not be divorced until the court signs the judgment. Are you going to keep the name uh, Wiley? Or you never you never took the name Schultz, so you're uh, that would, there's no need for a name change. Um, all right. All right. Thank you, Mr. Walker. I think I can uh, we'll proceed from here. Thank you for your assistance. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Wiley, is it, uh, are you still receiving public assistance? Yes. Okay, Mr. Schultz, do you receive public assistance? No. Okay. Um, 
Let's see. Because there's a $175 filing fee, when Ms. Wiley filed its worst complaint, the, the clerk suspended the payment of the filing fee. $255. I'm sorry, $255, because it was a minor child. $255, I stand corrected. So on the second page of the judgment, Ms. Wiley, and I'm going to make a note here, when you submit that, you've got to put some language in there. I think on the toward the bottom of page two, it says other provisions. There's a, a blank white area. You need to put in there that the defendant, Jared Schultz, shall pay, shall pay $255 fine fee to the Monroe County clerk. And Mr. Schultz, we're going to put a date in there. Can you pay that by March 29th? Uh, yes, yes, I can pay that by March 29th. All right, so you need to put a sentence in there, Ms. Wiley, that uh, the defendant, Jared, shall pay $255 fine fee to Monroe County clerk on before 3-29-2024. Mr. Schultz, that's the last day of uh, March. If you need more time, you ask the court, to, and I'll give you more time. Just don't blow it off, please, because if you blow it off, okay. that's a bench warrant issue. We don't want to go there. You can. Uh, you got to pay cash to the Monroe County clerk. If you want to pay by credit card, you can do that. You can pay over the phone, but they're going to charge you, I think, 3% fee. So it's your choice. Okay. Uh, with that, uh, Ms. Wally, uh, we'll proceed. Um, it's a true Ms. Wally filed a complaint for divorce with this card on about November 22nd, 2023. Yes. Is it further true that on the date you filed the complaint, you had been a resident of the Cumberland North for at least 10 days and stayed in Michigan at least six months? Yes. Is it further true that you married uh, Jared Schultz on December 28, 2018? You separated in August of 2022? Yes. Is it true there's been a breakdown of your marriage relationship to the extent that the obviously match won't been destroyed and there's no reasonable chance of reconciliation? Yes. Is it true there's only one child born during your marriage, namely Willow? Yes. Uh, any other children born or adopted during your marriage? No. Are you currently pregnant? No. Do you have any questions for the court? No, sir. All right. Uh, Mr. Schultz, can you please state your name and address for the court, please? Jared Schultz, 2174 Aspen Drive, Dallas, Texas. Zip code? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, 75227. Okay. Mr. Schultz, obviously, uh, I didn't realize when I told you about the fine fee that you lived in Texas. Do you want the phone number for the clerk's office? I can write, you can write that down. And you can yes, just call please. and pay it by credit card. You give them the, tell me you want to pay the, the 255 filing fee and give them the, uh, your, your file number. You can see that in the pleadings, 2023 42725. Okay. So, yeah, uh, just make a phone call and pay by credit card between uh, now and the end of the month. All right, um, uh, Mr. Schultz, uh, did you hear the testimony of your wife, uh, Carson, this afternoon? Yes. Was her testimony true and accurate to the best of your knowledge? Yes. Do you have any questions for the court? No. Okay. Obviously, you're not going to get together Tim Hortons this weekend to review that together and sign it. Ms. Wiley, once you uh, fill it out, are you going to scan email out to Mr. Schultz or how we get to, or are you going to mail it to him? How are you going to, how are you going to handle this for his review and approval? He should be in the area soon. Oh, but if okay, not, see. scan an email, sir. Okay. Mr. Schultz, uh, do you intend to come up to see Willow in the near future in the next couple of weeks? Uh, yes. Yes, I actually do. But um, I'm willing to take it via email too, if it's more convenient for us and the court. Well, I'd like to see the original signature. And again, uh, um, so either way, you keep in mind you'll not be divorced until the court signs written judgment. So uh, don't wait a couple months. Yeah, most definitely. So okay. communicating if it's going to be, I would say if you're not going to be up here yet this month um, and you want to get divorced, then uh, maybe she can scan an email to you. You can sign it and scan an email back to her. Um, do either of you have okay. any questions for the court? No, no, I sir. do not. All right, Miss Wally, if you need help filling that out, you can always come down to the fourth floor of the courthouse and I can talk to you and then uh, walk you through that. But it's pretty much self explanatory. You can check the box, drain legal, physical to um, um, to you, reasonable little prairie time for dad. Uh, each keeps the personal property currently in their possession, free and clear any coming part of the other. Each keeps your own uh, retirement benefits, no real property to be divided. There's no joint debt. Uh, 
Child support, I think what would what did the Mr. Walker said child support should be zero. Five I'd say five dollars a month because of uh, the state the child receiving public assistance. Uh, again, any other questions? No, sir. No, sir. All right. Uh, based upon uh, the testimony that's been presented, as well as the plain father's case, court finds that jurisdiction has been established and that there has been a breakdown of the marriage relationship to the extent that the objects of matrimony have been destroyed. There appears to be no reasonable likelihood that the marriage can be preserved. Accordingly, uh, upon receipt of the written judgment, the court will sign that judgment. And at that time, the court will order that the marriage between the parties be dissolved and judgment shall enter, granting a divorce from the bonds of matrimony. Again, you will not be legally divorced until the court signs written judgment. Once it's received and approved by both of you, the court will sign that and you'll both be mailed a copy. All right. So good luck to both of you. You can both zoom out. Uh, I look forward to hopefully that, uh, that judgment sometime yet this month. Yes, sir. Right, both zoom out. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome to our conference Welcome. after having discussed uh, the vision of outstanding credit card debts with Mr. Walker from the front of the court. Uh, Mr. Walker, uh, the party has been able to reach an agreement as to the division of, it uh, looks like almost $70,000 in credit card debts. Yes, sir. Not but yeah. Okay. Uh, can you state that in the record, what, what you understand to be their agreement? I can. The parties have agreed that um, Rodney is going to maintain that debt and be responsible for paying on the credit cards. However, Lee is going to Miss Braden is going to pay to Mr. Braden a total of $20,000 over the next 24 months. At the, so it'll be the rate of $833.34 every month, beginning the month of May 2024, for a total of $20,000 for her portion of the credit card debt. believe that that's how they're going to handle it, Your Honor. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Walker. Um, so again, the defendant, I'm sorry, the plaintiff, Rodney Braden, will pay off the $70,000 in credit card debt. And uh, the only obligation part of Ms. Braden is to pay Mr. Braden $20,000 over 24 months at the rate of $833.34 per month uh, for the next 24 months, commencing May 24th, 2024. Is that correct? Yes. Yes, Your Honor. All right. All right. Is this credit card uh, just in the Mr. Braden's name or is it in both names? In just my name, sir. Okay. All right. So that that, that seems much cleaner. So um, uh, Your Honor. Yes, the Mr. Braden. Only, the only question I got is uh, how the payments will be paid. If it be made through like the court and then it goes into my account directly, um, uh, how exactly that's going to be taken care of? Why can't I pay you directly? Send you a check or something? Well, uh, th that's fine as long as they come. Well, obviously, you want documentation. Yeah. So, uh, obviously, Miss Braden, you don't, you don't want to pay cash because then that you got to speak. You want to make sure uh, they either mail a check, make sure you don't mean absolutely mail it five days before the due date. Or you can do electronic transfer. I guess that's the question. What's easier? I'll, right. I'll mail it. If that's I'm okay. I'm sorry, Ms. Braden, you, you broke up. I said I'll mail a check if that's okay. Okay. Is that agreeable, Mr. Braden? Yes, sir. So if it's due the 24th, then you should probably mail it, you know, uh, you know probably at least five days ahead. You know, it's okay. It takes a long time to get to from Monroe to Dundee or from Dundee to Monroe. Um, okay. Um, now, you've already submitted and approved this judgment. If you want to get divorced today, the court can put this language in your judgment. I can initial it if you both agree. Otherwise, Ms. Braden, you come pick up this judgment. You guys put in the language and initial it. But it might um, be easier if you're agreeable. The court can write in this language in the judgment, and I can initial it. I, I agree to it. I do have a question, though. Go ahead. And, I, and you can go ahead and sign it. Um, I just want my previous name back, which is in the judgment. So when you get a copy of the judgment, Ms. Braden, you want to take a copy to Social Security and, and Secretary of State to facilitate the legal change of your last name, okay? Yes, sir. All right. Um, I took the proofs, right? Yes. 
All right, so once again, um, uh, the, I'm going to go through this judgment with you uh, that uh, spouses for is not awarded forever barred. Each, you've already divided your personal property, so each will keep their personal property crow in your possession, free and clear from any coming part of the other. Um, with respect to debts, Uh, you've uh, put in this judgment the, 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 the debts are divided according to the attached personal property addendum. I'm going to wipe that out and indicate each party will pay debts in their own names. These credit cards are all just in your name, correct, Mr. Braden? Yes, sir. All right. So I'm going to put that. There's, the none of these are in your name. Would you agree, Mr. Braden? Yes, I agree. All right. So we can cover it by saying that each of you shame be responsible in their own name. Um, each will keep their own automobiles. There's no real estate to be divided. Each will keep their own retirement benefits. And Miss Braden restored to Laura Moore. I'm going to add the following language. Uh, first of all, that the uh, fees March 31st, 2024. I'm sorry, March 29th. That's a Friday. Okay. To the Monroe County Clerk, okay? If you need more time, you call the court. Don't ignore it. Then the second sentence I'm going to add is that the... Um, Plaintiff Rodney shall pay all the credit card debt set forth in the attachment twenty sixty nine thousand seven hundred seven twenty, and that the defendant Lee shall pay to Rodney the total sum of twenty thousand dollars over twenty four months at the rate of eight thirty three thirty four per month commencing May twenty fourth twenty twenty four. And I will initial that language. I agree. I'm sorry, Mr. Braden. I said I agree. Okay. Um, do you have any questions, Mr. Braden? No, sir. Ms. Braden, do you have any questions? No, sir. All right. So, obviously, uh, um, Well, let me have uh, one last question, Mr. Braden. Braden, do you intend to file bankruptcy? No, sir. Okay. I'm trying to write well, it back. So I, 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 it dropped quite significantly, so I'm trying to get it straightened out. I'm trying to work with them and get payments set up, but I couldn't. I can't set nothing up when nothing was, you know, I, I couldn't depend on her to help me. You know, I mean, she says it, but she didn't pay nothing. Place, so did, you say, did you say you recently filed for bankruptcy? No, sir. No, I won't. Okay. I'm, I'm, Oh, so I'm not doing that. Well, what if you what if you do? Once you agree that Mr. Braden should have to not pay you twenty thousand dollars if you uh, file bankruptcy and get all this debt wiped out. I'm not filing bankruptcy, sir. I'm trying to get my credit straightened out. I'm trying to fix it. I don't want it bad. It's I work. I worked all right. my life. I have good credit. And I had good credit up until about eight or nine months ago. Um, when it just got to where I couldn't I couldn't maintain with no no help. Right. Um, but right now you're not employed, correct? Correct. I'm on social security disability. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. Again, any other questions? Either one of you? No, sir. No, sir. All right. Uh, uh, based on uh, the testimony that's been presented, as well as the plain file, this right, the court finds that jurisdiction has been established and that there has been a breakdown of the marriage relationship to the extent that the opposite of matrimony has been destroyed and there appears to be no reasonable likelihood that the marriage can be preserved. Accordingly, it is ordered by this court that the merge between the parties be and is thereby dissolved and judgment shall honor granting a divorce from bonds of matrimony. The court will uh, complete the judgment, sign that today, and be mailed out to you on Monday. Uh, good luck to both of you. That will conclude this hearing. And uh, Ms. Braden, take copy of this to Secretary of State of Social Security when you get it to change your last name. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, you can both zoom out, hang up. All right.